All right, I am lucky enough to be uh, here in San Francisco with um, George Fistinich, Sir George Fistinich, who is the founder and owner of Villa Maria in New Zealand. Now, I'm a big New Zealand fan. Anybody who knows me, has read or listened to me over the years, knows that I am a, a cheerleader for New Zealand, um, having visited numerous times and done everything from bungee jumping to hiking glaciers to eating lots of food and fabulous wine, drinking fabulous wine in, in the country. And um, you are, uh, first of all, I want to ask you, how did you get the title Sir? He's actually a knight. I feel like I should sort of bend and bow to you, Sir George. Uh, his contribution to uh, the wine industry, we've done quite a few things first, like uh, changing the contract system for paying for quality instead of uh, quantity in the early days. Uh, starting the first uh, winery restaurant in New Zealand after about a two-year battle, um, battle with government and local bodies, etc. And then I suppose um, we were the first to commercially um, launch, uh, go a totally cork-free zone and launch uh, screw caps throughout New Zealand. And that's now, now we're about 98% of New Zealand is all right. our screw caps and I think it's just a wonderful initiative. It's a wonderful yeah. thing and he's being quite yeah. modest because really You've been one of the founders of the of the modern New Zealand wine industry, mm -hmm. and um, uh, you know one of the pioneers in creating not mm -hmm. only a domestic market but uh, the international presence of New Zealand. I did actually uh, five years of a building apprenticeship because my father was Croatian and um, he insisted that my older brother had to have a law degree. So it was a matter of pride for a Croatian to be able to save money to put his older son to university, and I had to do a trade. But I found building. Um, a little bit repetitive and monotonous, uh, and uh, I was sort of, we had a, a sort of half a hectare of grapes at home and we were making homemade wine, selling a little bit to the neighbours, and then um, I was going out to Henderson. So wine making was yeah. much more creative than yeah, building. Yeah, yeah, I just sort of, I, I was envious of that style, so I gave up building immediately when I did my, did my duty, and uh, I wanted to get into wine making, so I leased my father's property and started Villa Maria. And that was 19... Uh, 1962. 1962. Yeah, so this is the 50th vintage. Uh, you can proudly say I was not born yet. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's fantastic. And yeah. over the years, what have you seen, not only from the perspective of Villa Maria, because you built it from one small company based outside of Auckland to a, a, an incredibly large and successful mm. and... Um, uh, you know, worldwide, uh, world-renowned company um, to the industry as a whole? Well, when I started, there was only um, Port and Sherry, and New Zealand had a very um, low image. Um, um, it was very much a beer-drinking culture, and any, any people who really um, loved wine and were fussy about it, you know, really brought imported wine, you know, French, German, or South African. So um, the, I, I had a passion for dry whites and dry reds, and so I started making dry white and dry red out of American hybrid grapes. Hmm. And, really? Uh, yes, in the uh, early uh, 1962. What um, American hybrid grapes? Uh, Siebel 5455, Siebel 4643. Uh, did, I, did that mean anything to you? Very sexy <laughs> names for grapes. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Siebel 5437. <laughs> 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 yeah. Merlot is a little better. Pinot yeah. Noir. <laughs> <laughs> okay. uh, didn't exist then. Yeah. 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 So, um, so actually, uh, Villemarie was pretty much the start of the modern wine industry. Uh, and um, anyhow, I was very fortunate that I, um, I won actually s second and third prize in my first show. So it put me on a little map as a little boutique winery. And um, it was actually, there wasn't any gold medals or things then, it was just first, second or third, so getting second or third for two dry reds was actually quite significant back then, yeah. And uh, we were one of the early ones to start making dry red, many, not many companies were doing right. that, it was all port and sherry. Right. So um, we actually, right throughout the 60s, uh, New Zealand was still very unsophisticated, but my generation were starting to travel, read, taste wine and uh, get curious, and so... Um, it was really in the 70s that... And it wasn't Chardonnay until the 1970s planting, yeah, that, yeah, that yeah. grapes with Sauvignon Blanc was even planted in no, that's world, right, right, yes. Well, even Chardonnay, right. Cabernet, Merlot, Pinot Noir, a lot of those varieties were fairly non-existent. In fact, they were around at the turn of the century and then Phylloxera in the First World War put, put a stop to all that type of thing, so it was like a, re, a, a big restart. Yeah. So when you think, you know, New Zealand has such a... 
a recognizable name, mm. um, particularly because of Sauvignon Blanc, but certainly mm. now because of other things mm. in the United States. When you think it, it really, the industry didn't start until the, the early to mid-70s. Oh, that's right, it's, yes, yeah. It's remarkable. Yeah, well, Sauvignon Blanc, I think it's only had the 30th celebration year about mm -hmm. three years ago, so it's only about 33 years old, which is quite amazing. <laughs> yeah, that's closer to my age, right there, <laughs> somewhere in there. <laughs> well, um, you uh, a, a toast to you, sir, for for helping to create an industry mm -hmm. and um, helping to put New Zealand on the world wine map. Oh, thank Cheers. you, Lisa. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, how long have you been at, at Villa Maria? So, ten years. Ten years. Ten years Back this year. Twenty-one. Ten years wow. this year. I know. Uh, Thirty-two. Uh, Twenty-two. <laughs> sorry. Twenty-two. Yeah. <laughs> Um, ten years, mm -hmm. and uh, a quick ten years. Mm -hmm. Prior to that, I was a flying winemaker traveling around Europe. Mm -hmm. um, but um, returning to New Zealand, working for Villa Maria was a, a company that uh, had um, exposure in every region. And for me, learning more about the New Zealand wine region was pretty important, and, and Villa Maria was able to do that. Let, let's talk a little bit about region, because it's actually two islands, and you run from north to south. And just, I mean, we do. you know, yeah. very fast, sort of, what are the key points? Well, um, firstly, um, small country, small population base, base, 4 million people. Uh, the North Island is warmer than the South Island. The North Island, from a grape growing point of view, um, much more su suitable, particularly Hawke's Bay, for your Syrah, your Bordeaux blends, Viognier. Um, uh, Chardonnay and what have you. And up around Auckland there's there's some wineries. Exactly, so Villa Maria's head office is in, mm -hmm. in Auckland mm -hmm. where um, Sir George lived and founded Villa Maria right. and so the winery, the new winery now is, is five kilometres from where he um, he grew up. Right. So yep, Chardonnay, a um, bit of Gewurztraminer, um, obviously there's Kimi River up, up right. in Auckland which is um, highly regarded for their Chardonnays and uh, you know, it make, makes a lovely style of wine from there. South Island, you know, everyone knows about Marlborough and Sauvignon Blanc. Which is the northern tip of the South Island. Correct, right. e exactly. And then you've got Nelson to the to the west, mm -hmm. um, makes some beautiful Rieslings, Pinot, Chardonnay, uh, a little bit warmer than, than Marlborough. That's right. And next next video I'll talk about my uh, judging of, of the Rugby World Cup wine competition in Nelson. Oh, yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, so Marlborough, you know, as I said, Sauvignon Blanc, but Pinot Noir is a dark horse. In Marlborough, um, Riesling, Chardonnay, Pinot Gris, pretty smart. White Pra, um, very nice um, fruit from there. Again, you know the, the aromatic varietals right. and Pinot, and then you guys got got Central Otago, um, well known for Pinot, um, which is like growing. It, it is growing grapes in the mountains. It is. I mean, it's, it, it's it's the most inland wine region. Um, it, it's it, it is um, away from any maritime influence, so that has the least impact. So, you know, New Zealand, I mean, for me, uh, the unique selling point of New Zealand is its natural acidity yeah. in the wines. I mean, they're just fresh, they're vibrant, they're lively. And then we've got Sauvignon Blanc, a Villa Maria Sauvignon Blanc in our glass, so I want to... Yeah. And, and I always describe acidity as the bra of the wine world because it lifts and separates and makes everything look perky. <laughs> I like so, that. So, yeah, so New Zealand is, what, a 38 double D? Very or, important. Very, very important. <laughs> looking pretty straight, see? So, but you're right, there's this crispness to all the wines, whether they're Chardonnay, whether they're, you know, Sauvignon Blanc, yep. whether it's Pinot Gris, there's this beautiful mm -hmm. freshness that makes it pair with food. Quite agree. Yeah. Quite agree. Um, you know, we've been trying some Chardonnays the last couple of days, mm -hmm. and people go, well, you know, Chardonnay, we make Chardonnay here in, in uh, California, so we all know, but the New Zealand Chardonnay is a little bit different because it's got that lovely acidity going through it, and, uh, you know, you see it in, in, in all of the varieties, really. Um, and, and you have a chance to really explore from all the regions and the varieties mm -hmm. because Villa Maria does such a huge breadth and, yep. and again, depth yep. of, of wines. We, we are lucky like that and uh, every region is different. And you know, people say, you know, how can New Zealand make you know, all these varieties and do them well? And it's, it's like, well, we have finally got it sorted out where the best varieties right. are grown and, and sort of make them to what, that, what, what the region will, will deliver. Yeah, Alistair is a master of wine and the general manager and very important lofty titles, but I've seen this man have a really good time. And my <laughs> favorite thing is he'll actually put a thirsty girl hat on. I will, I yeah. will. Yes. <laughs> you looked very handsome in your thirsty girl hat. Well, we had a good social time at the, the Rugby Sevens, do you remember? <laughs> we did. Or not remember? <laughs> <laughs> we did, I remember part, parts of it. <laughs> well, here's... But I'm prepared to put that cap on. <laughs> here's to Villa Maria. Thank you. Cheers. Thanks, Lisa. Thank you.